Today's video will be taking a second look at our 1997 high-end PC build. It was about a year ago I did a video on building a high-end 1997 computer. Um, now when I did that video there were a few problems. I had to work with materials I had and uh, I got quite a few comments in the comment section about uh, period correctness and how it wasn't quite either the parts weren't period correct for 1997 or uh, it wasn't quite high-end enough. So I was working with what was available to me, but the video always kind of bothered me. I, I wanted to do better. So to show you guys, I do read your comments, and I do take your uh, comments and ideas into consideration. I wanted to do like a redo of that video. So uh, that's what this is. Uh, I looked at a lot of your comments and complaints about my initial high-end 1997 build, and I think I've corrected most of them. So hopefully uh, this is my redemption for the high-end 1997 build. Now if you haven't seen that original video, I'll put a link in the description, if I remember of course. But it's not really necessary that you watch that video. Uh, I might not go over certain things as thoroughly uh, if I already went over them in that video, but uh, you can watch that video. I guess I would recommend it, uh, but it's not 100% necessary. So this right here is the uh, 1997 high-end PC Redux uh, rebuild uh, that I have right here. So right off the bat, I don't know if this case is a 1997 uh, case. Generally, in my opinion, if it looks the part, that's good enough. I do think this uh, case looks the part. Don't know if it's from 1997, but it it's beige. It's a beige tower. It looks the part. I think that's good enough. I went with a pretty simple setup here, uh, just a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive and this CD drive. Um, and just so you guys know, this CD drive is a 1997 uh, CD drive and it still works uh, pretty well actually. So this is a period correct part. And while we are talking about period correct, for this build I tried to get stuff that came out in 1997 that was considered high end for the year 1997. But I'm not a stickler on certain things like if it was actually manufactured in 1997. So for example, if I have RAM or a video card that was released in 1997 or was available in 1997, but the particular example I have installed wasn't manufactured in 1997, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, that was a comment that came up in the original video that uh, you know certain things didn't have a 1997 manufacture date. That That is probably like the most extreme interpretation of building a period correct anything and uh, that's a little bit too much for me <laughs> so uh, if it was available in 97 it counts but for this build it does not have to have actually been manufactured in 1997 all right so let's cut to the chase here let's open this guy up and let's take a look at the parts Okay, so let's take a look at the motherboard I'm using. So, in my original 1997 build, uh, probably the biggest uh, complaint uh, or the biggest issue that anyone had with it was the motherboard. Uh, so, I don't know the exact model, but I was using a motherboard from 1999, I think, and a chip with a chipset from 98. It was the 440BX chipset. Um, obviously not a 1997 chipset or motherboard, but it was the closest thing I had at the time. So with this build, that was the main thing, uh, issue I wanted to rectify. So uh, this time around I am using a AOPEN AX6L motherboard. This uses the um, LX uh, chipset. Uh, so I believe the chipset and this motherboard are 1997 uh, products. Uh, so so hopefully um, that rectifies that situation. Uh, I'm using a chipset and a motherboard. As far as I can tell, that is from 
1997. So hopefully that should rectify uh, my biggest mistake with that first build. It's not a particularly remarkable motherboard. I mean, it seems pretty decent. Uh, there's nothing super special about it, I can see. Um, ATX, obviously, we got AGP, uh, 4 PCI, and 3 16-bit ISA. Um, other than that, it's not too special. Slot 1, uh, we've got uh, 4 uh, RAM sockets here. I believe this actually can take a whopping 512 uh, megabytes of memory. Um, but memory was another smaller criticism of my first build. Um, so in that build, I used a single stick of 256 uh, megabytes of memory. And I had, I believe, a comment or two that that was just way too much, even for the high end uh, in 1997. So I scaled things down a little bit. Um, we're going with 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, that's still probably a phenomenal amount for 1997. And I'm doing it in uh, two sticks, uh, 64 megabytes each, because uh, that would probably have been more common setup than a, a single 128 megabyte stick. But um, I'm, I'm curious, what did you guys have as far as RAM goes in 1997? Uh, I'm trying to think, I, I believe I had 32 megabytes. Um, that might have been like the standard for the time, and I remember later on I upgraded it to 64 megabytes, maybe like a year later. Uh, but uh, what was your guys' um, RAM amount in 1997? I'm, uh, I'm a little curious, because, like I said, obviously Sport can support far more than 128, but uh, I'm guessing 128 might have been the high end. Uh, I don't know, did anyone have 256 in 1997? Uh, when I was doing research, I, I found a few uh, things online where people were indicating that they had machines with that much RAM, but I think they were referring to like servers or workstation boards. Uh, so anything, does anyone here had like a home computer with that much RAM? I'd be interested to hear uh, if you did. Um, we'll talk about the CPU in a minute. It's the same CPU uh, from the original build. Uh, same hard drive I'm using here. Um, I th this is a Metalist, I think from Seagate. It is a 10 gigabyte. That's, that's, a little high for 1997. I think in 97 on the high end we were maybe looking at like four or six gigabytes. Um, not sure. This one's 10 gigabytes. But this is the closest thing I had. So I don't feel too bad about using this drive. It is running on the uh, IDE on the motherboard. So speed wise it is still uh, restricted to the transfer speeds that the motherboard allows. Uh, I think it's either, I think it's ATA 33 on this board, so I don't think it's going to mess with our results too much. It's, it's pretty much going to run like a drive from 1997. It's just going to be a little bit bigger than what was available at the time. Uh, I think when you're doing these period correct builds, I think uh, things like hard drives is one of the areas where it's okay to fudge things a little bit. Um, you know, if you want to be really hardcore, you can go with something from that time period. But, like I said, I think that's some place where it's okay to to fudge things, but uh, but to each his own. Um, and here, of course, we have that CD drive. This is actually a 1997 drive. And um, yeah, that is the motherboard. So I think we rectified two of the biggest issues here, which was the motherboard chipset and the memory. Um, the caps actually look okay. And as far as I've run it so far, I haven't run into any kind of uh, stability issues. It's been pretty stable uh, overall. So here's the CPU we're using uh, for this build, uh, but this is a Pentium 2 300 megahertz. Uh, this would have been the definite top dog for 1997. 512 KB of L2 cache on board, of course, in this slot one sort of form factor. Uh, this thing was incredibly expensive for 1997. I think it was like $3,000 when it first came out. It was just crazy expensive. Uh, the, these days, obviously, they're not nearly that much. Uh, I found them in a few machines I've picked up, but you can grab them off eBay for, uh, well, I don't know, but I don't think they're not. Definitely probably under $50 uh, from what I remember. Regardless, it's a capable uh, CPU, especially for 1997. Uh, this should pretty much tear up uh, anything that you'd want to play on this machine. Uh, definitely was the top dog as far as performance goes for 1997. 
For our video card for our high-end 1997 PC, we're going to go with the same card I originally did, and that is the NVIDIA Riva 128. This is pretty much the top dog of 1997. Now, of course, it had a lot of stiff competition. There were a lot of other cards out in 1997, um, which is a reason I wanted to do this build again, and I wanted to do it right, uh, or at least attempt to do it right here, because I'm going to use this machine again in the future for a lot of testing uh, different video cards and 3D accelerators, because, I don't know, 97 seems like a a special year that you had a lot of different cards out there that use special like API and their own sort of way of doing 3D graphics. So it's a really interesting year in my opinion in uh, PC gaming history. But I think the Riva 128 is probably the top dog, or at least debatably the top dog for 97. Now, it didn't use, like, a special API. You didn't have to use the get special versions of games or patches to run it in uh, 3D mode. Uh, it actually just used direct 3D. Uh, and later, when the drivers matured, it, it was also able to do OpenGL, uh, but at the price of slightly slower direct 3D support. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, in my original video, we experimented with that a little bit with the uh, original drivers and some later drivers. You get better compatibility and uh, less glitches, it seems, with later drivers. And you do get OpenGL support. But with those early drivers, uh, in games that do work correctly in Direct3D, they can be quite a bit faster. I also like to point out that, yes, the Voodoo 1 card was out at the time. But I would still kind of give the edge to the Riva just because the Voodoo 1 was 3D only. It had no 2D capabilities. Whereas the Riva 128 did have 2D and 3D capabilities. So it was kind of an all-in-one. And it more or less did both pretty well. Now, of course, the ultimate setup, I guess, for 97 might be pairing this card, the Riva 128, with a Voodoo 1. That would be a pretty powerful setup for 1997. And I would probably do it for this build, but I do not have another spare uh, Voodoo 1 card. Um, my one working Voodoo 1 is already in a build, and the other one I have, unfortunately, is still not working. It needs uh, repaired. Hopefully it can be repaired at some point in the future. This card right here is the Dell Velocity 128. It is AGP. Um, it looks kind of shoddily made. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it works just fine, but just the look of it, it looks like very sort of uh, thrown together in someone's garage kind of look to it. Uh, standard VGA. Yeah, but other than, you know, the look here, uh, this thing has worked just fine for me. It has four megabytes of memory on board, and um, there's a little feature connector here. And like I said, this is quite a capable uh, video card for the time. Moving on to sound cards. This is another area where I got a little bit of criticism for my original build. So in the original build, I used a ESS audio drive card from 1997. Now the ESS audio drive is a fine card, excellent uh, DOS card, and pretty good in Windows. It has uh, pretty good FM uh, emulation. It is a good card. Unfortunately, as I labeled my video a high-end 1997 PC build, the ESS audio drive was indeed not seen as a high-end card. It, I don't really know where it fell into the pantheon of sound cards in 1997, but apparently it was a mid to low tier card. Now, I kind of knew this going into that video, but again, it was what I had at the time. And my thinking was, well, if you have a Lamborghini and you put in kind of a crappy stereo sound system, it's still a high-end card, just as you have a like a low-end or medium-tier uh, sound system in your Lamborghini, your Lamborghini doesn't automatically become some kind of uh, junker. It, is, it would still be considered, uh, in most circles, quite high-end. So that was my thinking uh, when putting in the ESS card. But for this build, I have rectified my poor decisions of the past, and this is the card I am currently have installed. It is a Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. Some people would argue that Sound Blaster cards are never high-end, but to be honest, I couldn't find any other card that would have been considered higher-end for 1997 as far as sound cards go. 
Um, it just seems like the Sound Blaster, uh, the AW64 Gold, uh, was kind of the only game in town at the time if you wanted a higher-end sound card. Now, if there are some other options out there for the high-end, please let me know. But it, when I did searches and research, it kept coming up AW64. Now, the live and things like the Monster uh, sound cards came out a little bit later. I think the live came out in... Um, 1998, so that was one year later, but it seems for 97, the Aw64 Gold was where it was at. Now this Aw64 Gold, this is CT4390, uh, I do not have the extra memory uh, expansion for this card, it's just the vanilla card. These cards are pretty excellent in DOS. They kind of function as an AW32 uh, in DOS. And for an ISA card, they also perform quite well in uh, early Windows environments as well. I'm not going to go too deep into the details of this card because uh, I do have a video down the road where we might look at this card uh, a little bit deeper and look at the features in a little bit more detail. So uh, I'm not going to go over things too deeply here, but um, we do have two... Uh, connectors for the analog uh, CD-ROM connector. We have a speaker connector right there for the PC speaker. Um, right here is the memory. There's four megabytes of memory on board. Now you can load sound fonts onto this card but uh, that's really beyond the scope of this video. Uh, connectors right here for proprietary memory expansion. There are kind of like homebrew solutions uh, where they've made uh, I guess you would call them homebrew or third-party memory expanders since the uh, official ones from Creative are quite rare and hard to find. I think the max of memory that can expand it to is 32 or maybe 38 megabytes. I think it's 32. Um, and you can add, uh, if you do have the memory expanded, uh, you can add much better sound fonts to it. Uh, with 4 megabytes, you're, you're kind of uh, not a whole lot you can do as far as uh, quality goes. Uh, right here, this is a connection for the uh, digital uh, out. There's usually there's a little cable that connects and then it goes to a, a bracket. Uh, usually when you find these cards, uh, even on eBay, uh, that's usually missing. But uh, it is an option there for digital out uh, sound. Uh, there is no real uh, FM chip on here. I believe the FM synth is integrated in here, uh, but I, I do not believe these had like an actual a real uh, chip for FM sound. Um, we have the MIDI connector here, MIDI joystick. I do believe the uh, MIDI port here, MIDI slash joystick port on the AW64s, uh, is hanging MIDI bug free. So uh, I believe you should be able to connect an external MIDI device if you'd like, uh, and you shouldn't have to worry about um, like things like the hanging MIDI bug. Although I've read different things, maybe there might be some early revisions of the card um, that actually still have the bug, or some sort of bug, uh, but I don't know for sure. I've also heard that these are all uh, hanging MIDI bug free, so again, we're not really going to test that uh, today. Uh, this video isn't really specifically about this card, so a little bit out of the scope of today's video. We have a line in and mic in, and then for audio out, uh, we have these two RCA jacks. It always kind of annoyed me. I guess the RCA jacks are kind of like a high-end option, but I, I just want a I just want a little audio jack for line out. Just it's just so much simpler. Um, but it's not a big deal. You can get one of these jobs, uh, you know, pretty cheaply. These RCA to uh, one I think one eighth stereo audio out works just fine um, but yeah just it would have been convenient just to have a, like a regular uh, jack on here for audio out but whatever uh, this apparently is the high end for 1997 uh, so yeah let's uh, let's install this and uh, let's see our results I should also point out that these cards are pretty expensive these days on places like eBay easily going for more than a hundred dollars or even more uh, just to do a little bit of a thrifting flex here, I found this guy, ooh, maybe three or four years ago at a Goodwill for about $3.99. Alright, and here's the post screen. You can see I'm using the 97 BIOS. I did not update the BIOS on this particular build. I may do that in the future. So you'll notice in these benchmarks and the games that I play, a lot of these are the same ones I used in my prior video. 
uh, of the My1997 build. I just wanted to do that to be able to contrast and compare. So right off the bat, looking at the benchmarks here, I'm just going to say, uh, in almost all of these, this build, uh, with the older uh, motherboard chipset, actually scored slightly better uh, than the previous uh, build that I had in the previous video, even using the newer chipset in that previous video. Um, I don't know for the reason for that. It, I wouldn't say it's in the margin of error, although they are close, but uh, usually on almost all these benchmarks, this older motherboard uh, with the LX chipset seems to do 2 to 5 FPS better in most of these benchmarks and tests. I don't know why. Um, who knows? You know, it, it could be a simple BIOS setting that uh, in the previous build I did, maybe something was set that was slowing things down a little bit, and then this one, maybe something set that's speeding it up a little bit, and it's just a, a little bit faster. But I, I fully expected this board, just being an older chipset, to be running a little bit worse in the benchmarks than the previous build. Um, but I guess not. Uh, I'm pretty sure I set both of these to like defaults in the BIOS, so who knows, it just might be a setting somewhere that's giving this older motherboard a little bit of a boost. Uh, but it is it is pretty small, like I said, 2 to 5 uh, FPS. So for results, uh, 3D Bench 1.0C, we got a whopping 205 uh, points. Uh, PC Player at 640 by 480 we got 37.6. Doom at high details, we got 79.5 FPS, pretty good. And Quake at 640 by 480 we got 28.4 FPS. So uh, overall a pretty good showing, uh, very close to that other, uh, the, pre uh, the results I did in the previous video. Uh, the only difference with this build, again, is like less memory and we're using the LX chipset from uh, 1997. Same, exact same CPU, exact same uh, video card. So uh, those are our results, just some quick benchmarks in DOS. So now let's move on to the meat and potatoes here. Let's look at Windows 95 running on this machine. Well, actually, before we look at Windows 95, I just want to make a quick comment that I am not running something like FastVid. This is all vanilla. Uh, so we would get probably substantially higher FPS uh, in these DOS benchmarks if I use something like FastVid, but we're doing completely vanilla here. So first thing we're going to do here, as usual, we're going to take a quick look at things through CPU-Z, make sure everything's on the up and up here. Uh, you can confirm the CPU speed and the memory and the motherboard chipset and all that good stuff. Uh, so let's talk about video drivers. So video drivers, kind of like the hard drive, is another spot that I, I think it's okay to smudge things a bit uh, when you're... Uh, doing period correct builds. Uh, so in my initial video, what we found out was that uh, those initial, at least some of those initial drivers for the Riva 128 from 1997 were actually very fast at Direct 3D games, but unfortunately they had no OpenGL support, and we ran into a lot of games with graphical glitches. Um, Mobile Suit uh, Shogo was one of them, uh, had a lot of glitches, uh, even 3D Mark 99 had glitches, a couple other programs found had glitches. Uh, so for these tests, for this build, I am running the drivers from 1999, uh, NVIDIA reference drivers, uh, for the Reaver 128 from 1999. Um, these drivers are not as fast in Direct 3D. In some games, in some applications, it can be as much as a 10 FPS difference, uh, but they do support OpenGL, and it fixes the graphical glitches with a lot of games. Uh, so I think there's a lot more benefit to using the slightly later drivers from 99 than the older drivers from 97. Uh, the boost to Direct 3D just isn't worth it. Uh, so I would recommend using at least the 99 uh, drivers if you're going with a Reva 128 uh, in this kind of build. So starting off the Windows benchmarks with Final Reality. Uh, benchmark ran just fine, no issues at all. And uh, we have a final score of uh, 3.4 uh, for running the Final Reality benchmark.
3D Mark 99 was another good benchmark for Windows. Uh, no issues with it. Uh, at the end, we've got a final 3D Mark score of 651. Um, now, compare that with the previous video uh, where we were using that B 440BX motherboard. Uh, we got a score of 663. So we did score a little bit higher uh, with the old not quite as period correct uh, 1997 build. But uh, for this build, again, we got a score of 651. Running the demo for Forsaken, we get an FPS of 46.8. And finally, for our benchmarks, we have Quake 2 at 640x480 using the OpenGL uh, for 3D effects. And with uh, Quake 2, we get a FPS of 40.6. <laughs> And I just wanted to show you guys real quick here. This is the utility here for if you wanted to load sound fonts into the AW64 Gold. Uh, you can see the 4 megabytes down there was mostly taken up. That's kind of like the default uh, synth uh, that's in there. But you can, uh, you can load other things like General MIDI uh, and MT32 and stuff if you have the sound fonts. Uh, you can like delete the old ones and upload the new ones. Um, of course, more memory will let you put in better better sounding sound fonts. Uh, for this whole video and this whole build, I just went with the default, uh, so I didn't upload any different sound fonts. Okay, so let's take a quick listen to the AW64 Gold here. We'll do that through the Final Fantasy VII configuration utility. Uh, for running the MIDI, it gives you two options. I believe one is called Creative Music Synth. I believe that is the sort of the FM synthesis on the AW64 Gold. And then the other one, um, I forget exactly what it's called. Um, I think it's like creative music something. But that would be the uh, the built-in standard creative like MIDI synth. So this is Mobile Suit Shogo, and this is actually from my previous video. Um, and in that video, I played this game, and I used the old drivers from 1997. And as you can see, obviously the textures are messed up. It gives a weird sort of uh, vaporwave sort of feel with the the like light blues and the the pinks, purples. Um, but anyways, yeah, I never in that video I never got to test to see if it was a driver issue and try the newer drivers. And here's Mobile Suit Shogo uh, on the current machine using the 1999 reference drivers. And as you can see, it was a driver issue. And using the newer drivers did clear the issue right up. Although, arguably, it doesn't look as cool. Hi, Carla. Nothing for you, Commander. You're on duty. Now, 
Now here's Tomb Raider 2 from 1997. Um, so in the last video, if you've noticed those little, between the textures, those like white uh, lines, you can see them pretty well in like on the walls of the rock formation. Um, those occur a lot with the Riva uh, 128. Uh, with a lot of games, you see this issue with uh, the little white lines in between maybe like textures or polygons. I'm not sure the technical aspect. Anyways, in the original ish uh, video, I called that screen tearing. Um, I was corrected in the comments. Apparently that isn't screen tearing. Screen tearing is something completely different. Um, so I don't know what you would call this issue with the, the white lines that appear. Uh, but it, I have noticed it tends to happen. I see that a lot with these Riva cards. Um, where uh, other cards I don't necessarily see that as much. Uh, it seems to be kind of an issue with these Riva cards. I don't know what that's called. Um, if, any, if there's an official name for that happening with the white lines, uh, let me know in the comments. Alright, so let's just take a look at a couple more games here. And then we'll uh, finish things up with my final comments. It can't be that. It's just too dark to make out what's in there. Let's see if you can take this! I if I rough him up, he may shoot me. I feel like... Mm, they're too heavy to carry. I can't reach it. You in the fort! Your doom be at hand! So that is our video on my redo of my 1997 high-end PC. Uh, I think we corrected most of the issues uh, that uh, people comment about in the original video. At least I hope we did. If you have any comments on this machine, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, you may be wondering what's going on right there with the floppy drive and the zip drive. Well, during the process of making this video, I realized that the floppy drive in there uh, wasn't working. It was bad, so I had to remove it. Unfortunately, at the moment, I, I go through uh, 1.44 megabyte floppy drives like crazy. <laughs> Not that they necessarily fail, but I like put them in every computer that I have. So all I had is one with a black faceplate. It works perfect. I'm going to be replacing that with one uh, with a beige or white faceplate when I get one. It's the same with the zip drive there. I, uh, I just didn't have a zip drive with a white faceplate, and I decided to put in a zip drive because, unfortunately, many times with these Windows 95 machines, I can't get the USB ports to work. This motherboard has USB built into it, and even though I found some really good sort of universal Windows 95 USB drivers, they maybe only work 75% of the times, and sometimes I'll just get uh, motherboards that just 
I just cannot get the USB working. Uh, even when I, if I install a card, a USB card, it just doesn't work for whatever reason. It just doesn't detect the USB, or it gives me some kind of error in Device Manager. Uh, USB is, is fickle with Windows 95. So this is one machine I just couldn't get the USB drivers to work. Uh, so my best and my easiest option uh, to transfer files to this machine was a zip drive. So that's why those are installed right now and they look a little out of place. But anyways, we'll be seeing this machine again in the future. Um, I'm probably going to swap out the hard drive for something kind of uh, newer, a little bit more reliable since I think I will be using this machine a lot for some, some tests because of the era uh, that I have it set up for. But anyways, uh, what do you guys think of this uh, 1997 high-end PC uh, Redux uh, build? Let me know in the comments. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.